Over the past few years, maybe the last decade or so, I've noticed a trend in Hollywood that I'm not too fond of. This trend is almost entirely at the fault of one entity, Disney. While pushing the limits of visual effects to new levels is inherently good, industry strides and technological advancements have been hand in hand since the dawn of the film industry. That being said, I think the visual de-aging of actors, and in some cases, even recreating dead actors, has gone too far. Disney's first attempt with this digital de-aging was in 2010 with the sequel to the cult hit Tron, Tron Legacy. The original movie stars Jeff Bridges, but in Legacy, they wanted a more traditional younger actor to play the main character, but had to create a bunch of flashback sequences to make Jeff Bridges the father figure of that new main character. They had several scenes where Jeff Bridges was attempted to look younger. Later in the movie, the antagonist Clue takes the form of this younger Jeff Bridges, and we get more uncomfortable looking facial expressions. While this attempt at de-aging was certainly ambitious, it was many people's biggest gripe with the movie as a whole. Tron Legacy didn't do well critically, or as well as they were hoping financially, leaving the franchise back in the state of an awkward cult success. Personally, I think Tron Legacy's example is more of a matter of trying to show what technology was capable of. Not necessarily offensive by any means, just a poor creative choice. However, Disney didn't chalk this attempt off as defeat. Rather, it was the start of a new pattern. Disney wanted to improve this technology, and what better way to do that than with their two largest properties, Marvel and Star Wars. Both Marvel and Star Wars were already warranting giant visual effects budgets and larger financial returns. Half a decade later, in 2015's Ant-Man, it was time for Disney to attempt this again. Now, whether it was the five years of technological advancements or a much less ambitious use of the technology, Michael Douglas actually looks decent aged here. Ant-Man, while heavily connected to a large franchise of movies, hot off the financial success of Age of Ultron, was a huge hit. The movie made its large budget back, and no one seemed to have a problem with the digital de-aging of Michael Douglas in that one sequence. Personally, I think Disney proved at this point that using VFX to digitally de-age someone is not only plausible, it can be convincing. No surprise, a year later, Disney and Marvel would attempt this again. In Captain America Civil War, Tony Stark relives a pivotal scene from earlier in his life with his father. This time, Disney made an actor not just look like a younger version of themselves. They made the face of their franchise look like he did at the very start of his acting career. While technically impressive, this is where the concept started to leave a sour taste in my mouth. Were these scenes even crucial to the plot? Was it worth the hundreds of animators you had to hire and thousands of man hours that had to go into making Robert Downey Jr. look like he was 20 again? Unfortunately, this is where the concept began to be distasteful. Later that year, Disney released Star Wars Rogue One. In this film, Disney really doubled down. Grand Moff Tarkin, a character portrayed by Peter Cushing in the original Star Wars nearly four decades before the release of Rogue One, was completely digitally revived. Cushing had passed away in 1994, so for the first time, Disney wasn't simply de-aging an actor who was in their movie. They were recreating a dead actor to play a character in their film. On top of that, they digitally recreated Carrie Fisher, who was still alive, mind you, to look more like she was 40 years ago. Disney thought they could play God, and just two weeks after the film was released, there was a horrible, unfortunate passing. And we begin with the passing of a Hollywood legend and an American original. Carrie Fisher, whose role as Princess Leia in Star Wars vaulted her to pop culture immortality, died today in Los Angeles with her family by her side. She was 60 years old. After the unfortunate passing of Carrie Fisher, you would think that digitally de-aging would be frowned upon now, right? Well, no. It was time to digitally de-age Kurt Russell again. Disney went full circle with Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and made 80s Kurt Russell again. With Carrie Fisher dead and Star Wars The Last Jedi soon releasing, many wondered if it would be the end of the character. Perhaps she would die off screen? Well, fortunately, Fisher was able to record most of her scenes and the others were used by superimposing outtakes from The Force Awakens to finish. 
and despite faking out Princess slash General Leia Organa's death multiple times in the movie, her character lives through the end. Thank you, Ryan Johnson, for subverting my expectations to the point in which you use a real-life actor's death to determine the outcome in your movie. Disney came to the point that they realized they were more powerful than human mortality. After Fisher's death, they digitally de-aged Michael Douglas again, Michelle Pfeiffer, Nick Fury, Phil Coulson, and the entire original Avengers cast. De-aging in the Marvel Cinematic Universe became more popular than writing good villains. However, it was time to end a saga. It was time to remove the name Skywalker forever in the conclusion of Star Wars. Episode 9. Rise of Skywalker. Wait, what? Anyway, despite Carrie Fisher now being dead for over three years, Disney decided to play God with her character once again. With the blessing of Fisher's family, literally, her daughter plays her body double. To know that we were doing this with sort of her at our side, that's something that I'll just always be grateful to her for. They digitally recreated Princess Leia again. Now, 10 years after Disney's first attempt in Tron Legacy, de-aging and digitally recreating actors is becoming a staple of the industry. To say Disney created this trend might not be entirely true or fair. In David Fincher's 2008 film, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, they both digitally de-aged and aged Brad Pitt's character. The X-Men and The Hobbit films also de-aged characters before Disney put it in their major franchises. But I do believe Disney is to blame for the trend of resurrecting the dead as uncanny 3D renderings. I believe without Disney recreating Peter Cushing and Carrie Fisher, we wouldn't have James Dean co-starring in Finding Jack 65 years after his death. The only justification I have for this trend is the amount of jobs that it creates. You still have to pay someone to play the body double. And your post-production budget at least doubles, having to hire hundreds of animators to digitally and painstakingly recreate just one person. You might think I'm a hater of this trend, or maybe even just Disney in general, but I do think the digital recreation and de-aging has been done once, tastefully. With Blade Runner 2049. Jared Leto's character shows Harrison Ford's Deckard the new recreation of Rachel, his love interest. She appears nearly identical in her appearance in the original Blade Runner 35 years earlier. But then, Deckard says, Her eyes were green. And love promptly executes her. This works well, because despite how close Disney or any other money-hungry studio gets, to digitally recreating the image of an individual, nothing can beat the original hardworking actors and the amazing performances they have given us. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. Do you agree with my stance on digitally de-aging and recreating actors? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you like this style of video essay and if I should do more. As always, thanks for watching.